Hi there, everyone. I'm Alejandro Stamato, engineer on the Android Developer Relations team. Um, here, we'll try to find the answer to a question where to host state in Compose. And what state we're referring to UI state, or what you need to display in your app together with the internal state of UI elements. In any Android app, there is also two types of logic, UI logic, or how to display your state on the screen, for example, how to show your list of messages, and the business logic, which are the rules that make your app your app, like where do these messages come from and your data sources. Uh, where, you where, you store your where you host your state will be um, dependent on what type of state you need to apply uh, to, this, uh, to this state, what, uh, what type of logic that reads or writes your state. So let's begin with the case of um, your UI state living in composable uh, your Let's begin with the case of having to apply UI logic uh, to your UI state where that logic lives in your uh, composable functions. Uh, perfect. That's it. Okay, so let's consider this chat app. We have a bubble that expands and collapses on top. If you go to a composable functions, we have a show details a variable. It's an internal variable and the logic applied to it is very simple. So hoisting the state in this case wouldn't bring that much benefit. So we leave it here, making the composable function the owner of this state. Um, so as you can see, uh, not hoisting, it's a valid option. But not hoisting your state, uh, makes your UI less reusable, and there are some cases in which we need to apply UI logic to it before sending it forward to other composable functions, and that's where we need state hoisting. Consider, so let's consider lazy column, what a, what a lazy column does. Um, lazy column defines lazy list state parameter with a default value given by remember lazy list state. This means that any column composable can define it outside and passing it down if they need to. Um, now let's say we want to implement two things. The first, in our, in our chat app, we want a button to jump to the bottom of the list, and for this, the button needs access to the, uh, to the list state. And also, we want to scroll to the bottom of the list when we send, after typing a new message. And for this, the user input needs access to. Um, right now, the current owner of the lazy list state is the lazy column. So what we want to do is to hoist it to at least the conversation screen, so that can be forwarded then to the message list, and the user input can call UI logic, and the same thing, the message list can uh, forward it to whoever requires it. In our code, what uh, this turns out to is you go to a conversation screen, you define the state with lazy list methods, um, pass it down to the message list, you call your logic in the user input, and then the message list defines it uh, with a default value of remember lazy list state, just like we saw that lazy list uh, does, as a best practice to increase the stability, and then we forward it back to the lazy column and the jump to bottom button calling your logic to it. Uh, what we've done so far is just hoisting the state as required and changing who the owner is, while avoid passing it to composables that don't need it. Um, we recommend placing your state in the lowest common ancestor between all the composables that read or write this state. But when your logic becomes complex, you can abstract your state and logic into a plain class which will also make your composables simpler and allow testing that UI logic in isolation. And we've had an example of that all along. Lazy list state abstracts the state of a lazy column, storing the scroll position for this UI element, and also it exposes methods to apply UI logic to it, like scroll to item, animate scroll to item, etc. So we covered different cases of where to put your state when you have UI logic applied to your UI states, composable some place they hold the class. Now we'd see what happens when we have business logic involved. Our view model is a great choice as implementation of the screen level stakeholder, which handles the business logic. So what we want to do now? Now we want to fetch user suggestions in a chat space when the user types add and a hint. And of course, these suggestions come from the data layer. So what we want to do is um, and obviously, this uh, is considered business logic, so what we want to do is have the input message or the text field state hoisted to at least the view model, which now obviously takes it outside of the composition. You're hoisting your state outside of the composition. And then it ca the, your state can be ac um, accessed to, uh, from the conversation screen, and you can also call UI logic be, uh, through the view model's exposed methods too. Notice that now the view model is the lowest common ancestor and owner of this state. In code, we go to our view model, we define input message with compose APIs, um, and by doing so, input message also survives configuration changes because of the view model's uh, scope. Uh, 
Um, and for our suggestions, we define a new double state flow, apply some UI logic as you receive a new input message, and that's it. You have you have that uh, emitting, the UI collecting from this flow, receives the new suggestions, update the UI, and everyone's happy. So um, what we've seen is that when we have been the logic being applied to UI state or producing UI state, you should hoist that state to your screen level stakeholder if you model in our case. And that's our table completed. Um, as a recap, where you hoist your state will de be determined by the type of logic that needs your state and that needs to write or read that state. And we've explored several examples uh, from having the composables at the bottom as a source of truth to hoisting it higher to extracting or hoisting your state to a plain stakeholder class or to the view model outside of the composition. We recommend keeping state as low as possible, closer to where it is consumed, and exposing immutable state and events to modify that state from the owner for the consumers. Um, some more resources for you to learn more include the UI stakeholders and UI production talk from LEB uh, today, and the uh, architecture documentation. Um,